How's it going everybody? Mark Villarreal with Los Canaleros del 956. On today's video, I have my client Eddie De La Fuente joining us all the way from Wisconsin. He traveled 1,500 miles to target the famous alligator gar, one of the world's prehistoric dinosaur fish that still exists to this day. Stick around as we go over the different type of rigs we use, today's preferred bait, and the different rod and reels we use as we catch and land these beautiful prehistoric dinosaur fish. So let's get it on everybody. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the little bell at the bottom so you can stay up to date to all of our upcoming videos. I'll see y'all out in the water. Should be using yeah, that's correct. I would rather use a thinner line because if it gets that way it gets snagged on a tree, um, it would pop the line and we don't have to worry about that snag. But I think if it does get snagged in a tree, I think I'll have enough space to cut it. So it will be fine. Just in case. Yeah, last, uh, last Sunday, we got a catfish on it, and it was by the tree trunks on the other side. My flow was over, I didn't leave it there, but it was there. And uh, when I picked up that flow, we had a nice blue cat there. I gotta make a passageway. Yeah. That's all it is. This leader is a leader that I uh, invented for alligator gar fishing. It's my M2A. Normally it's for like a whole fish. You know, you're gonna use probably a hand sized fish. And you wanna stick this end through the mouth and push it all the way through the gas. And your fish is gonna come out like this. But it works special for these heads.
All right, so we're gonna throw out a couple of jugs just to um, try to see if we can land some catfish, man. I'm trying to get a, a good sized catfish out of this lake. Pretty much a trophy. If I do catch a big trophy, I probably won't harvest it, but if I do catch a uh, nice eating size, and I probably harvest it. Unless Eddie decides to harvest a monster catfish, but I ain't gonna harvest no monster catfish. <laughs> he says no. <laughs> but I want a good eat. I think a good 10 pounder would be good for me. I don't know why I think 10 pound would, would just be ideal. Um, anything bigger than that just probably be too big for me. So let's go ahead and throw the jugs, everybody. Let's see what we can catch, man. Right now we're in about five feet of water. I want to throw them in about seven feet. And there's a good pool right around us. There's a great pool where I want to throw the jugs. I call it a pool because um, it's surrounded in a circular um, type of form, surrounded by islands and, and uh, stuff. And uh, it's it's like a hole. You know, I call it the I call these things pools for some reason, right? Um, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw them in this in these pools once I start getting into seven feet of water. Right now we're in about oh we're already in seven we're already in eight feet of water. I think that's where I want them. <laughs> Nine point five feet. I think this is the actual river. That's why the river runs through here. Ten feet. So yeah, we don't want them too deep. It'd be nice, but we don't want them too deep. Although we could throw them, and the weight will probably once it floats to you know to the ideal def it'll probably stay in place because the lines are about 10 feet so let's do it oh, 13 feet bro i think it's too deep so where yeah, this is the actual river that's why the river goes through there and it oh, comes through there. here look the noises, uh -huh. it's a channel. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're right on the river, 12.9 feet. So we want to get right on the edge. I wouldn't mind, I'd probably get a monster out of this channel, but we only made those things 10 feet long. Well, if you need me to do something, let me know, man. I know how to do everything, man. Drive, look, and sail. So I'll throw the first one, mm -hmm. and then you can more or less see how I throw them. It's not hard. I just, the, the, the key here is you want to line them up. Line up the jug so we can, so they're not uh, far away from each other. Not that they're far away, but we know that they're lined up so they don't go out of place. So I threw that one there, probably gonna go that way. And just throw them in a straight line. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the right side. <laughs> Eleven feet. I'm gonna get a little more shallow. Yeah, I just throw the weight first, and then you can throw everything else with it. Eight feet, perfect. Right here? Yeah, right here. That's it. Yeah some space and we'll throw the next one. We'll be checking them right before sundown. You can throw the next one. There's fish here, bro. <laughs> yeah. Either we got some blockage or the wind came down. Nice, seven, six. You can throw it right here.
They're not moving. I don't think they are. You get a toy. The jugs are in. The jugs are in. We're going to anchor. We're not too far from our anchoring spot where we're going to anchor and uh, cast out our our lines. Our rod and reels are going to be casted out. Hopefully we get some action. Hopefully we get some action. Can't wait to hear that first run on that rod. All right, everyone, we're going to try out The new setup on the boat, this is our LCD 956 custom rod, as you can see. This is an LCD 956 custom rod. This is a North Fork composite blank by uh, the one and only Gary Loomis himself. And this is an Apuma Rockway Live Liner. It's freaking awesome. It's a long shaft to give you that extra um, casting distance. Some never used it before. Um, I think it's amazing, but we will see. We will see hopefully today. So my line's already set up with a snap swivel. All I'm gonna do is bait up my leader and we're gonna cast. Probably again, this one's gonna, this one's probably good for an M2A leader. LCD 956 liters, everybody. Order yours at LCD 956 bait and tackle.com. These things right here, these are the go to rigs for alligator gar fishing. We got about six different styles floats and floats and non floats. See, they catch everything. Must be careful with these rigs. For those of y'all have been uh, following the channel, you've seen these rigs in action. You already know what's up. Check that out. Look at that beautiful bait. Look at that beautiful bait. You tell me if it doesn't look appealing for, for a bigger fish to just come and take it. So basically I'll run the rig through the mouth. I'll run it through the mouth. And then it'll come out to this side where it's cut. I'll bring bring the head all the way down to the hooks kind of looks like it has whiskers now which is not intended for that it's not supposed to look like whiskers but it looks like whiskers what I mean is like this is not why I made the leader that way it just happens to look as if it has whiskers maybe it is maybe it, it's effective that way because of that Try casting it. Yeah? yeah. Alright. So what uh you reel with your left or your yeah. right? How far you wanna go up? As far as you can straight with the wind. This is the first time we try this rod and reel, so if it breaks it breaks. Let it go. Right there. So we're setting up our second rod and reel. 
Mr. Eddie is setting up a 4000 uh, Shimano. Oh, it's a bait runner. Yeah, it's a bait runner. It's a Shimano bait runner. But heck yeah, he's ready. He's ready for Gar. We'll see 4000. <laughs> yeah, it's a 4000. It's not it's not the big machine, but that's going to be a fun fight. Check that out. Beautiful reel. Heck yeah. And then you have it on a uh, St. Croix. Yep, it's a Mojo Cat St. Croix. Seven foot. So are you a big two. are you a big fan of St. Croix? Um, I do use quite since, a bit of them. Since you're from Wisconsin? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried all different types, you know, but like I've told you before, I mean, I mainly more just for the fight. You know, I use lighter tackle, but, you know, just a preference. Everybody has their own preference. Heck yeah. The the thing about it is my friend um, Hector, the one that lives in in Wisconsin, he loves St. Croix. I love St. Croix too. And my friend uh, Joe Valencia, he has some St. Croix. They're, um, I don't know, they're musky. Yeah, they're musky. See, yep. they're musky rods, yeah, and yeah, he has them. Rods. He has them on Shimano, um, the bait runners, the gold ones. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I forgot what they're called, but they're amazing, amazing rods, man. Uh, I'm a big fan of St. Croix. Yeah, St. Croix is actually, they're out of Park Falls, Wisconsin, so they, you know. They do a lot of ice fishing stuff and I mean they, you know, they actually are good rod builders, you know. So, I mean, I've tried all different types, I mean, you know, but uh, when you do purchase a fishing rod, obviously, you know, you just can't try it out and take it back, you know. So, I do have quite a bit of uh, catfish rods, but I seem to always go back to, you know, the, the St. Croix. Heck yeah. Yeah, I love St. Croix. Um, I think St. Croix and uh, G. Loomis rods are probably my ultimate favorite but um the g loomis before shimano took over mm -hmm. so that's why my custom rods my personal custom rods are on north fork composite because that's the actual gary loomis himself uh, as i mentioned before yeah. um, st croix and gary loomis is a, it's a business a company that's been there for many many years and um there's nothing bad you can say about those rods mm -hmm. at all. They're good rods. Man. So let's go ahead and uh, tie up the, our leader. I'm going to put this. You know what? Probably single J. This We're going to put a single J hook. We're going to put the single J hook leader on his rod. Here you go. Just do your best knot. That's all it is. We don't need no weight, no nothing, because we want that alligator guard to run with the less resistance as possible. Obviously, if we're fishing high current areas, then you probably would. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin, they probably use a tri lee knot. So basically, what you do is you go around twice. So, what it does it actually puts a double loop on the bottom of it. Nice. So that's it. What is that knot called? Um, a trilene. A trilene knot. Trilene knot. So he does do a lot of fishing out there in Wisconsin. Um, a lot and a lot of fishing. We're talking about the amazing type of uh, fishing Wisconsin has to offer. And uh, he has some great, awesome stories, pictures, and everything. I think we got a little hit, but it's not for sure. I think we already got a little hit. It's not for sure, but the rod that we just threw in is, is kind of teasing us so yeah let's go ahead and put some bait on there so i did i did pre-cut all the carp so we won't make a mess on the boat and all the carp can be nice and cut and ready to go and all that good stuff so check it out check out my my chunks i think this would be the perfect bait right here how would you? I mean, I would just normally go yep. through here. There you go. On this way. Let's make sure there's no scales man, on that. And you're going to want to cast the same thing, but obviously, probably either right of the first one you cast it or left. But cast with the wind. Yeah, I'm going to probably go to the left because we're sure to go right. Go to the right. right. Yeah, since you're on the right, you're going to get a better cast there. First run. 
on that new rod. Let's see, guys. Yeah, let's go for it. Pick it up. Um, whenever you're ready and you feel confident enough. Solid. There you go. Shook, right? Yep. You feel the shake. <laughs> he's coming towards me. You feel him? Yep, he's coming towards me. Think so? Yeah. Feel just a bait? Yeah. I feel no more head shakes or nothing. It's swimming towards me that much, but yeah, sometimes that's the case, man. Those swimming towards you, but it's only two things: either he came off or he's swimming towards you. But even then, you should have felt a nice little weight on there. I would have felt it already in the snot. I'm just dragging it. Yeah. The head. Yeah, I think it came off. It's gonna pop out right there. Yeah. yeah he's off. Yeah. Are you ready? It's your car, brother. Top drag good? Yep. Thank you. I'm going to tighten that down. Those wheels are tough, man. Let that let the attention. Yeah. <laughs> You're mad now. I I have enough line. Trust me, if you get there you go. St. Croix Mojo in in action baby. <laughs> we are hooked on baby hopefully we land this beautiful beautiful fish i say beautiful because everything we put out of here is freaking amazing think so are you sure nope <laughs> I'll be coming towards you fast.
He's on. He's on. Woo! Look at that. Eddie is hooked on baby Wisconsin in the house. <laughs> he wanted to fight a guard with a light tackle and he's fighting an alligator guard with light tackle. That is freaking amazing. This guard can be anywhere from three, four, five, six, seven foot long. We don't know, but it is going and it's going good. I'm gonna take out that other rod. <laughs> oh wow man, I hope I got that. I think it did. Oh shoot bro. That is a massive alligator gar on a 4,000 reel. What is that, a medium heavy rod? Medium. A medium action St. Croix Mojo and a 4000 Shimano. He's gonna he's going towards the shallow. I don't think he'll cross the shallow bank. Maybe he will. Yeah, just be very careful. Move a little bit to the left, to the center. Right there. Right there, you're good. Is he over or under? Yeah, he's under this one. So bring him back around. And then I'll take care of this other rod. Be careful. Yep. Can go towards the front. Nope, I'm here, dude. He's gonna take you for a little ride. That's a massive guard, bro. Yeah, you will just do it slowly and he'll turn. You see? Come on, baby. So he's gonna go again. No, no, this is bad.
He has to get. What I want to do, I probably would get in the water and just grab him. <clears throat> oh, right here is like two feet. Oh, it isn't. Yeah, oh, okay. Not even that deep. Got air just to go back down. That's how strong your knot is, that's how strong that leader is. That's how strong that rod and reel is. <laughs> so, you want me to get them? I'll get in and I'll get them right here. Woo! I got it. <laughs> I tapped his tail. Excited. I'm just going for another run. Yeah, okay, now he's in the deeper end. Is he? some slack. Woo! Point the camera just a little bit down. Right there. <laughs> He's heavy, bro. <laughs> I imagine. all about <sighs> so 
So we did land a nice healthy car. Um, my guess is six foot, six foot on the dot. That's my guess. And um, as you saw, he caught it with his light tackle rod. It's actually a medium, medium, medium rod. It's that um, St. Croix Mojo with that 4,000 bait runner. Those of y'all have been following me for a while, you know how much I love to fight these big fish on light tackle. My customers like, you know what? I wanna try this. I wanna try this rod and reel. I wanna put it to the test. I wanna see what it has. And he says that he would enjoy fishing for a nice fish on a light tackle rod rather than a heavier tackle rod. So we went ahead and did it. And uh, by the time you know it, it was the first rod and reel that was hooked on. And, and it was just a freaking, just a perfect, the perfect moment experience and uh he fought it for a good time man so i do guess he is a six footer and what do you what are you guessing eddie what do you think i would probably say about six feet two maybe you know six six two but definitely a very nice healthy fish you know yeah and definitely put on a good fight um living in wisconsin i've never experienced anything i guess that you know that kind of a fight i mean we've had sturgeon but not to the boat like that you know so it's definitely a one of my highlights, you know. I appreciate it, you know, bringing me on here, you know. Heck yeah. It's good times. That's what it's about, everybody. Um, so what part of Wisconsin? I'm in central Wisconsin. Central Wisconsin, everybody. For all those that are in central Wisconsin, a big shout out to, I know we have some viewers of Los Caneleros 956 in Wisconsin. A big shout out to everybody. Um, you don't, you don't have any shout outs that you'd like to give out there to Wisconsin to yeah. some people? All my friends up there, Jamie Wilson, Chad, Chad Crop, Bud, all my good friends, Dave, whole gang, man. Heck yeah, everybody, a big shout out to all his friends out there in Wisconsin. I want to be, I want to give a big and special shout out to my friend Hector. Uh, he's out there in Wisconsin too. Um, Hector, waiting for you to come down here. We can do some weight fishing. I want to give a big and special shout out to my staff out there holding down the store at LCD 956 Bait and Tackle, my custom rod builder, my manager, um, Jesus. A big shout out to Mr. Jesus, big thanks buddy. A big shout out to Junior Ochoa out there. A big shout out to everybody out there, the LCD 956 family, Los Canaleros del 956 family, everybody. Um, Hopefully we land some more gar. We want to have some fun out here. We're going to give it some time. We're going to see what we can catch. One of the jugs is already caught. We saw it from a distance. It has a small gar, about two to three feet big. We saw it from far away. It's probably about a good 200 yards, maybe. 150, maybe 150, 200 yards away. And uh, we did see that gar jump out of the water with that jug in his mouth. So that'll be fun. Let's see what we can catch everyone. Stay tuned. So we're gonna check what we have on the jug. Let's see what we have, let's see what we have. That one's good to, uh, yeah, he's hooked up on the weight or what? It was, the weight came off. Nice, perfect. Spotted. That one's good to make it uh, stuffed in the pit. As you go with that picture. Yep. Beautiful car. Yeah, those don't have a limit, man. All right, all right. So we did get here. We got here to the dock. I'm gonna see if I can pull this bad boy to the cleaning table. 